What's going on, people? Welcome back to Curtis Shaw TV, back with another live stream. And happy Monday, people. A big Monday for Arsenal, a big seven days for Arsenal. Bayern Munich coming up tomorrow night in the Champions League quarterfinal. And also Aston Villa at the weekend, a big league game as well. And uh, listen, what a weekend that just was, man. Yesterday, Man United v Liverpool, even for me, we took Shameless to a whole new dimension yesterday. But it was necessary, people. You know, as Malcolm X used to say, by any means necessary. And um, listen, we needed it. That positive energy for Man United, you know, it helped them get that 2-2 draw against Liverpool. But as I said, you know, we still don't rate Man United. They're rubbish. But um, yeah, it was, uh, it was a great day yesterday, that... And uh, obviously, Arsenal handle business on Saturday. We're going to look back quickly at that game and do player ratings and so on and so forth. So, yeah, listen, a very interesting and busy weekend uh, for Arsenal. But it worked out. It worked out. Manchester City, though, they were purring against Palace. So, um, listen, it's, uh, it's, it's going to be interesting. As I was saying... I think we might need to win seven out of seven to win the Premier League, which is a big ask, but it's doable. And uh, yeah, listen, it, it was good. It was a good weekend for Arsenal and uh, one that, you know, was exciting as well. It's going to be an exciting title race, I think that's for sure. Um, just quickly before we move on, um, I want to look at the Premier League table and just see how that has affected things. Now... Let me get my logo out of the way. Obviously, Arsenal top of the league, which is great because it's in our control now. No matter what we thought before the weekend, we could have won every game and lost the title. And that's not a nice feeling. You know, it was in Liverpool's hands in their control. Now, the fact that it's under our control, win all seven, you win the title. Okay, they could catch us on goal difference, but I don't think they're catching us for nine games, uh, for nine goals. So it's in our hands. And as I keep saying to people, the next seven games are against seven teams that we are better than. Aston Villa at home, Tottenham away, Man United away, Wolves away. Yeah, these are tough games. I'm not saying they're going to be easy. I'm saying if Arsenal go to Tottenham, we've got to beat them. We're better than Tottenham. We beat them away from home last year. We've got to go there and beat them. You play Aston Villa at home, they're not in a good run of form, you've got to beat them. It's a simple, we're playing seven teams, tricky games, but to me, we're better than every team we're playing against. So it's about individual performances, win seven out of seven, you're champions. It's as simple as that. Everton at home, Bournemouth at home, they're the two that you would say, they're not easy, but they're games that you should definitely be winning um, out of this run. So listen... Is it going to be easy? Absolutely not. Is it achievable? Definitely. You know, it was definitely achievable. At this stage last season, we still had to go to Manchester City and we always knew that game was going to be so difficult. You know, Villa at home, I expect three points. Wolves away, difficult. I expect three points. Chelsea at home, I expect us to beat them. Tottenham away is our hardest game, no doubt. They will be motivated to stop us. If we go to Tottenham and play well, we'll beat them. We're better than them. They don't have Kane. Son's not the same player he was. It's tough, but if you do well, you do the business. Bournemouth at home should be a win. United away, listen. Yesterday, we were the most shameless Man United fan base in terms of Arsenal adopting Man United you've ever seen. If Man United play against Arsenal the way they played against Liverpool yesterday, we will beat them, right? They were wide open defensively yesterday. We will punish them. We're, I think we're more clinical than Liverpool. I do. Liverpool should have won the game yesterday, but they can't finish. Same as the FA Cup game. They can finish, but against Man United, they haven't been able to. Everton at home should beat them. Listen, we can win seven out of seven. We've got to believe. But it'll be tough. It will be tough. Um, yeah, I have to say, by the way, Man United fans, how the hell do you watch Bruno Fernandes give the ball away Time after time after time, then roll around on the floor like he's been shot when anybody does anything to him. And then, and then, one of the worst technically gifted footballers that I have ever seen in Premier League history, Aaron Wambasaka, the absolute loose cannon of all loose cannons. 
Wow, how do, how have they watched Wamba Saka play football for so many years? I, I would have to lock the stream off. I can't watch that guy play football. Do you know what? If I ever meet Wamba Saka, I'm going to say, you know what, brother? I got nothing but respect for you. And he's going to think, that's a nice comment. You know what I mean? He's got a lot of respect for me. Must rate me as a player. I said, do you know why I've got so much respect for you, bro? And he'll say, why? I'll say, the fact you are a Premier League footballer on £120,000 a week with the technical ability level of Sunday League pub football. I, I Listen, don't hate the player, hate the game. You can't knock the hustle. That guy is horrific. Yeah, he does the odd good recovery tackle and he can run a bit. His technical ability is shambolic. Uh, it really is. People think I wouldn't say it to him. That, yo, uh, Mike's, uh, well, we'll see, we'll see. I'll probably see him in the summer. I say, bro, yo, how you've made it to the Prem, I'll never know. Imagine if we signed him. Arteta, don't go anywhere. In. Arteta wouldn't sign him. He likes technically gifted players. He ain't signing him. But I can't knock the hustle. Big up United. Thank you for getting the point off Liverpool. Liverpool fans are fuming. However, you know, we still don't rate you. We need to come to United and smash them lot up. Um, he has the best agent in the business. Well, after Chupo Moting, relegated with Stoke, ends up at PSG and then Bayern Munich. Uh, big up Wan Bissaka, man. Left him man alone, G. Nah, listen, nah. Big up Wan Bissaka. Big up Wan Bissaka. Um, you know, I, I respect I respect the hustle, bro. Kobe, though. Kobe. Kobe? Is it Kobe or Kobe? Listen, Mainu. Forget the first name. Mainu. Listen, Mainu. I'm putting out a public service announcement. Full screen. Public service announcement. Mainu, put the transfer request in. I know you're a Manchester lad, boyhood Man United fan. Mainu, do the right thing for your own career. You're welcome here as far as I'm concerned. Come and play for us. Come and play for us. That guy, hey, listen, he wasn't actually that good yesterday, by the way. But the goal, 18 years of age, 18 hours in Iron Apple. Doing Jaeger bombs, tequilas. Um, you know, Ray and Nephew. This guy's bending it in the top corner against Liverpool. Just calmly celebrating doing that. I was said, nah, nah, nah. Nah. That's probably why I never played at that level, because I was in Iron Apple. Um, doing Jaeger bombs and tequilas. But hey, I enjoyed myself, you know. But uh, what a player. What maturity, man. That guy is an absolute baller. The only thing that concerns me for him is, you know, um, Ten Hag and them. Are they going to develop him? Anyway, let, enough of that. Man, you, you've done your job. you got a point. You're still rubbish. Anyway, let's move on, people. Let's move on. Let's concentrate on the mighty Gunners. By the way, apologies. I've... Uh, Done the stream at four o'clock today. I was supposed to do it too. Went to do a preview with AFTV at the Emirates. That got delayed slightly. Um, so I didn't get back in time. So I had to move the show to four o'clock. So appreciate everyone tuning in um, despite it being later than usual. Um, let's talk about Saturday's game. It actually feels like that game was so long ago. And uh, by the way, just quickly, the breaking news of today, I've only just seen this actually, is uh, Everton have been deducted two more points for the second charge that was placed against them um, for profit and sustainability. Uh, it doesn't actually change their league position because they'd already had four points taken off them. The only interesting thing, how that may or may not affect Arsenal we play Everton last game of the season. I would rather play an Everton team last game of the season that's already safe and has nothing to play for and we smash them. Do you, I don't want to play an Everton last game of the season that needs a win to stay in the Premier League. So, not sure that will affect Arsenal, but you never know. Hopefully, we've already won the title by then and it means nothing. But, yeah, interesting. Um, another two points taken off Everton. In fact, I think it has dropped them another place. You're right. They were 15th. They were above Brentford on goal difference. They've now dropped to 16th. So uh, not looking good for Everton. Um, anyway, let's concentrate on uh, greatness. Forget all this Man United talk with their stinky style of football. Um, Brighton against Arsenal. A masterclass 
on the Pebble Beach. Uh, I said it after the game, and I said it in the fan cam. Big up everyone who, who tuned in for the fan cam. Uh, make sure you hit the like button. What a performance. What a mature performance this was from Arsenal. In my opinion, I think this was one of the best performances of the season from Arsenal. We've beaten teams by more goals. We've had more difficult games. This performance was so complete. Defence, rock solid. Jao Pedro, all them lot, nothing, no problems. Never looked like conceding a goal. We could have still been on the pitch now, they wouldn't have scored. Attack, chance after chance after chance. If anything, the only thing that I would complain about a little bit, we should have scored more. We should have definitely scored more. Um, Saka should have scored early on. But it was up there as one of the best performances of the season. Mutant says uh, Liverpool performance is the best. That's definitely up there. We conceded a bad goal that day, you know, the own goal. But yeah, because of the team we were playing against. But this was a great performance by Arsenal. Rakaia Saka, penalty, 1-0. Kai Havertz makes it 2. Trossard makes it 3. Personally, I loved the Trossard goal. As I said, reminded me of uh, Alexis Sanchez. Um brilliant chip against West Ham all them years ago in the yellow kit. As I said, people, this is a Brighton team that's lost once at home all season in the Premier League. This is a tough place to go, the Amex, and we rolled them. We made them look like Bristol Rovers. It was light work. What a performance, and the manager and the team deserve so much credit for this performance because, I'll be honest, I was nervous about this game. Uh, let's go into player ratings, people. You know, the drill... Um, 20 shots on goal, by the way, seven on target, 45% possession, two shots on target for Brighton at home is incredible. You know, they are a very lively team at home and they've got some good players. Uh, let's talk about Arsenal, uh, player ratings. Let's skip through it. We will, uh, do a slight preview for, um, Bayern Munich at the end of this show. And I will have a pre-recorded preview coming out tomorrow, um, that I've done at the Emirates. David Raya in goal, solid performance, just above average. Again, didn't have that much to do. Two shots on target, collected his cross as well. Kicking was good. Uh, I'll give him a seven. I think he was just above average. Another clean sheet. Could be winning the Golden Glove this season. He's come a long way, you know, and I have to give people... I always have to make it clear on this channel. There's no agenda against any player, any manager. If I'm not convinced, I'll say so. When we signed Ray, I was like, is this guy better than Ramsdale? I'm not sure. Now, I would say, no problem. This guy could end up winning the Golden Glove this season, you know, for clean sheets. Same as Arteta, he will get the credit he deserves. And the same as Kai Havertz, he will get the credit he deserves. But the job isn't complete yet. David Raya, 7 out of 10. Another solid performance. Distribution, good. Did really well. 12 clean sheets this season. Um, he must absolutely love playing for Arsenal because most games, how much does he have to do? Nearly every time we come here, I go, oh, David Raya, one shot on target, two shots on target. He don't have to do hardly anything because he's got a brick wall in front of him. So, nah, big him up. And he didn't even start the first four games. Exactly, we were still doing Ramsdale. Um, and he did make a really good save. Yeah, you're right, he did, he did. Seven out of ten for David Raya. Let's go to the back four. I'm going to give Ben White a seven. I'm not quite going to put him as high up. The reason I'm not going to give him an eight is he got stupid yellow card. They had a little spell in the game for like 10, 10 minutes where he, he started kicking people. Yeah, you know what? We'll hit Raya up to seven and a half. It was a really good save. I only just remembered that. I give Raya a seven and a half. Ben White, I give him a seven. He got a stupid yellow card and cut, you know, he fouled a few players. But he still had a good game. Seven is still good in my opinion. Um, so he was good. He was good. He had a good game. An emotional game for him. I'll give him seven and a half. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Going back to your former club, sometimes you're a little bit fired up. I'll give him seven and a half. Um, but then I feel like David Raya played better than Ben White, to be honest. And Ben White dived. You're right. You're right. And he was a bit embarrassing. He gets a seven. 100%. Ben White gets a seven. I know it's dark hearts. If you do it and it works, I'll accept it because it's not nice, but it worked. If you do it and get caught, it's stupidity. So the dark arts didn't work. I give him a seven. You'll learn from it, though. So I give him a seven. Still a good performance. 
Uh, Ross said, if Arsenal were a biscuit, what would they be? I'm thinking something robust and hearty. <laughs> we, we spoke about biscuits for most of the first half um, against uh, uh, Liverpool, man, you. Uh, Joba said, Carl Walker and Ake are out of the trip to Real Madrid. You watch what Vinicius does to their right back tomorrow. How annoying is it that UEFA have put Real Madrid Man City on at the same time as Arsenal Bayern Munich? I want to watch both games. Why would you do that to us? Um, Zinchenko. Zinchenko, 6 out of 10. Average. Not going to not gonna harp on about him too much. Said it time and time again. Um, just not a left back, uh, you know. On the ball, just... Last season, the thing you always said was, he's not great at defending, but he's fantastic on the ball. Now, he's not even fantastic on the ball. I'm not going to disrespect him, but if somebody comes in with a decent offer for him in the summer, I'd get rid of him. And now Aurier's cooking him online. I mean, I'm not going to talk too much about that. I think Zinchenko said something along the lines of, if he gets called up for duty, he will go and fight for Ukraine. Aurier was like, you know, stop talking about it. Just go and do it if that's what you want to do. But, you know, that's neither here nor there. But six out of ten, and I definitely don't want to see this guy starting against Bayern Munich. Let me tell you that. Thank you for your time, Zinny. Zinny, um, on your bike. Go and play for... I don't know, Dortmund or someone like that. I, I, I just, I'm not, I'm not rating him anymore. And that one that he just miscontrolled and went to their wing, I was just, oh, he's lucky I haven't given him a five, you know, because we won the game. Two centre backs. I'm just gonna quote them both. Mm, do I? Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna give them both eight out of ten. The two great moments of the game defensively. Gabriel's block in the 91st minute, where he's like, ah. Spartans attack! In fact, I'm going eight and a half. And then Saliba, where he gets the ball on the edge of his six-yard box, he's getting pressed, and he just turns out like he's got all the time in the world. And I'm like, bro, you're in the Premier League, they're pressing. And he's like, no, relax, bro. I'm not a Rolls Royce for no reason, and just turns out. And I'm just like, you're just unbelievable. How are you both this good? I, like, you don't, I, I think as a football fan, you don't often, like, you appreciate your centre-backs, but you don't love them that much, because, you know, football is really based around attacking, let's be real. Uh, they are, like, they're genuinely exciting, even as centre-backs. I just, oh, just, just keep them at the club for so long. They're so good. They're just so good, honestly. Um... People saying nines, you know, I'll go with the community, give them nine. They're making defending look like a walk in the park. Uh, let's go to the midfield. Uh, let's start with Jorginho. I thought Jorginho was quiet, but I'm still going to give him a seven because he did get a little bit better as the game went on. He got an assist. I thought he was very quiet in the first half, but he got an important assist. That second goal secures the win. I tweeted, um, Jorginho's off the pace today. For, um, about 45 seconds later, he gets an assist, so I deleted that tweet. <laughs> Shamelessly. 7 out of 10 for Jorginho. Calm performance. Um, and listen, they had more possession than us, so I suppose when we're not dominating the ball, Jorginho isn't as effective. Um, so I give, I give him a 7. Um, let's go to Declan Rice. Deckers. I thought second half, he really grew into the game. Um, he really grew into the game. So first half, again, he was quite quiet as well, Declan Rice. But I thought second half, some of his challenges, he went on some driving runs. I thought Deckers did well. I thought he was slight. I thought he was better than Jorginho. I'll probably give Rice... I wrote down seven and a half slash eight for him. I'm going to just give him an eight. I'm going to give him an 8 because I just think the guy's classy. A couple driving runs. I just love the way he plays, man. He's just a brilliant player. And uh, I think you're right. You know, he got the rest in midweek, only came on for 20 minutes, and he, he was good. I thought Rice did well. I was going to go 7.5, but I'll hitch him up to an 8 because he's just so good anyway. Um, Martin Odegaard. Uh, Odegaard. Hmm. People saying Jorginho got an assist, so should be higher. But I just thought Rice's 90-minute performance was better than Jorginho's. Maybe, hmm, I lit Jorginho up to seven and a half. It's an important assist. But I thought he had a quiet game. 
Maybe Decker should have got a seven and a half as well. So we'll give him the same. In fact, you know what? Let's give him all seven and a half. Seven and a half for Odegaard as well. I thought Odegaard was good without being spectacular. Um, so I'll give him seven and a half. Seven and a half all round. Pre-assist settings. Um, didn't shoot as much, but yeah, seven and a half is fine. Midfield were all very similar. Jorginho, quiet, got the assist. Rice, quiet, grew into the game, won the ball back. Odegaard kept things ticking. Good performance and uh, happy with all three of them. Let's go into the front three. Bakayo Saka. Um, hmm. Saka, Saka, Saka. I'll give him a seven. I give him a seven. He, I mean, when I look at the team, I would say after Zinchenko, he was probably. Our le I'm not going to say worst. It sounds very negative. I want to say least effective player. Um, I'll boost it with the penalty because at the end of the day, a penalty is not an open goal. You've still got a score. I would have given him a six because of the penalty. It's the opening goal. He's missed a big chance. I'm going to be very kind and maybe give him a seven, people. I don't know what you guys think about that. Maybe I'm being overly kind there. I don't think he played that well. He should have scored, but the penalty wins as the game. It's a stat pad in performance, and I still just don't think he looks particularly sharp. I don't know if he's carrying an injury. Arteta said he's not, but I've been there. You miss a big chance. You want to make up for it. You get the penalty. You're under pressure. If he misses that penalty, we're in trouble. Like, still scores the penalty. But, yeah, I, listen, realistically, I should have given him a six and a half or a six. Six and a half for the goal. But <sighs> goals win games. I'm still giving him the seven for the goal. I am. But, yeah, six and a half is, is acceptable. He didn't play very well. Giving the guy seven for a penalty is kind, but... Goals win games. The first one, I don't know how he misses the target. He cuts inside. I've got no idea how he misses the target from there. He's not his sharpest, but maybe we'll just get a stat pad in Saka between now and the end of the season. He needs more. Listen, you're up against Alfonso Davis tomorrow, one of the fastest left backs on the planet. Not an amazing defender, but he's lightning quick. You've got to, you've got to damage these fullbacks more. But anyway, let's move on. Gabriel Jesus. I thought Jesus played well. I thought he was better than Saka. Wins as the penalty. Some of his defensive work was fantastic. Not, not easy to play left wing when Zinchenko's the left back because he's not going to overlap you. He's going to tuck into midfield and invert. So I thought Jesus played well. I thought he played really well, in fact. Uh, I'm going to give Jesus 8 out of 10. I'm going to give him a lot of credit. He wins the penalty. We were struggling to score. Um, oh, no, nah, yeah, you're right. He misses that sitter in the second half. Seven and a half. I got to move it down. Big up the community. I totally forgot. How does that guy miss the target from there? As a striker, his career is probably over at this football club. Thank you for reminding me. You know, I was about to give him eight out of ten. I can't give him eight out of ten, bro. You're missing headers from seven yards out unmarked, not even making the keeper make a save. Like. <laughs> I'm actually being kind giving him seven and a half because he won the penalty. But the brother can't finish at the moment, man. He, seven and a half, I'm being kind. His finishing is abysmal. You know, if you made him his breakfast, he'd drop it on the carpet right now. He just, oh, there'd be Rice Krispies all over the rug. You know, it just ain't going to work. Seven and a half, and I'm being, I think that's fine. I think that's fair. Uh, I think, yeah, I mean, we've said that before. He's, he's become the Lacazette of Arsenal. He'll put a great shift in. He'll work hard. He can affect the game a bit. But is Gabriel Jesus any better than what Lacazette was? I'd say he's a more mobile Lacazette. Lacazette just looked knackered. We were calling him Nakadzet. I, I think I think this guy is, is, is just... He's a more mobile Lacazette with, with better cheekbones. And that is it for me. For 50 million quid... You know, it's like when you buy something, it's gone past the 28 days, you can't get your money back, and you go on eBay and look at the buy now price and you list it. You know, you might give them free delivery to encourage them to buy it quicker. Jesus, if you're on the bench next season and we use you in rotation, no problem. But for me, 
I, I think I think Pep uh, I think Pep finessed us nicely with Zinchenko and Jesus. When you look at the players that Pep sold in the last two years, Sterling stinking out the place at Chelsea. Mares in Saudi, I never really hear about him. Gundogan's done okay at Barca, not as good as City. Jesus doing interviews saying scoring goals is not his strength. Zinchenko's talking about he wants to go to war and crying at Liverpool and gives the ball away under no pressure. So I'd say Pep's done pretty well when it comes to selling players. Um, 50 million, by the way, you know. Anyway, big up Southern Gooner. Make sure you go and follow Matt. Curtis could be an Arsenal comedian. He's got the best Arsenal jokes. That breakfast analogy, no diddy. No diddy, people. No diddy. Uh, he's a better footballer than Lacazette. Lacquer is a better striker. And look, Lacquer played nearly every week. Jesus injured all the time. You're injured and you're not... Let me not say too much. I don't want to sound like I'm really slaughtering uh, Jesus because he played all right, but he just... He'd have Rice Krispies all over your carpet. He ain't finishing his breakfast. Um, Cole Palmer, yeah, that is one that maybe Pep's got wrong. Anyway, Kai Havertz, killer. Dipset, Harlem. Berg gang. Um, I've realised this guy is a guy that when you watch him, even sometimes, like, I was even watching the Brighton game thinking, is Havertz playing well here? Like, I haven't seen him on the ball much. I haven't seen him have a shot. But you know the crazy thing about how Havertz is playing? Havertz, at the moment, is playing like a big money striker signing. Because you know a lot of the best strikers, they're not in the game that often. You don't need to be in the game that often. Unless you're a false nine and you're dropping deep like Firmino used to and you want the ball all the time. Some of the best strikers are hardly in the game. Look at Haaland. He touches the ball the least amount of times on the pitch for Manchester City. He does his damage when he touches the ball. This guy is just... He's becoming a clutch player. He's becoming clutch. Three months ago, I would have taken a Tesco meal deal to get this guy out of the football club. A decent sandwich, a good solid drink, and maybe a fruit box. I would have taken it and said, take that Chelsea fraud and get him out of this football club. Right now, you're one of the first names on the team sheet. I can't even believe I'm saying it. I'm almost a, a little bit... Um, I wouldn't say ashamed, but, you know, the shameless settings knows no bounds here, but he's, he's got great movement. He seems to always get a great chance. He's scoring goals. Imagine if he'd played all season up front. He, he could be on 15 goals right now with eight games to go. He could be pushing 20 goals. I can't believe, I can't even believe what I'm saying. I, I think I need to put him on the green screen while, we, while we're discussing him. Killer Kai Havertz. Now, a key question. I just want to say something for context. Um, VL said, do we still need a striker? Now, one thing I want to make abundantly clear. He's playing well. He's scoring goals. Don't get carried away, Arsenal. Do not sit there. I, people say, I want to give up. This is a public service announcement to Arsenal Football Club. Killer Kai Havertz is doing the business. He's scoring goals. He gets chances every game. I appreciate the way the guy is playing right now. I'm going to give him his player rating at the end of this conversation. Do not dare, Edu, sit there in your office and think, because of this form from Havertz, we don't need a striker. No, no, no. Get your checkbook out. Spend 60, 70, 80, 90 million on a striker, Jokarez, Osimhen, Tony, Isak, whoever that is, get the striker in. Don't get caught up in this. This is fine. It's good. I like it. I respect it. But we need a gunman up front. We need a gunman, right? So that's what I want to say. Don't get caught up in this. He's not an out-and-out -out striker. He's not a prolific goal scorer. He's plugged the gap right now, people. Yeah, we need the long-term solution. So, yeah, there we go. Enough said on that. Right, let's go back to this. Um, Kai Havertz, mate, man of the match. Man of the match. Simple as that. I think people have to understand. 
it's not easy to play up front by yourself when you're not a pr when you're not a natural striker. Very difficult. This guy is playing like a certified striker at the moment. He looks like he's going to score nearly every game. And there's a knack to it, people. People disrespect Haaland a lot. They, oh, it's tapping, tapping. Do you know how hard it is to score a tapping? Not the actual act of finishing the tapping. The actual ability to get in the right position to score a tapping. It's a knack, people. It's an art form. It, it, it's something you can't teach. You've either got it or you haven't. You can try and perfect it. To say this guy is not a natural striker, every single game this guy gets a good chance. The movement, the game understanding. He's a space invader. He really is. Pickled onion, spicy beef, barbecue. He will invade space if it's there. Now, let me just say something. I'm giving him man of the match 9 out of 10. I am. He led the line well. He scored. He's got presence about him. I've got a lot of respect for him how he's turned things around because let's be honest a lot of the fan base man and he would have known he would have known about it as well you know and um what i will say to havertz i've given him a whole heap of respect there and he deserves it you've got to go up to the next level now bro this is the next level we're about to play Bayern munich we got to go tottenham away man united away you got to you got to score more goals against these teams now to re for me to really be like yo you've turned it around completely you've got to go to that next level now so listen some people think i was too harsh on havertz earlier in the season for me i've never come on this channel and said havertz is a bad football player i always said technical ability he's always had it but he's now performing at the end of the day, football is about production. When you sign a player for big money, you want them to produce something and improve you on the pitch. For that first quarter, first half of the season, he was he didn't improve the level of the team. Whether that's his fault, the team's fault, the position he was playing, blah, blah, blah. If a player's playing badly, I'm going to sit there and say, you are playing badly, people. I'm sorry, I'm not going to sit there and go, because we've signed him, I'm just going to put my head down and pretend this isn't happening. No, it was happening. He was dropping stinkers at the start of the season, in attacking midfield especially. Now, he's settled down, he's playing up front, he understands the team, it's connected, it's all working. Fine, he will get his praise. Green screen, 9 out of 10, what more do you want? He's getting it. I'm a reflection of the team, people. It's as simple as that. But I'm not I'm not going to babysit players. Opinions can change. They go, oh, you're flip-flop. You didn't rate Arteta, now you rate him. Well, no, I didn't, mate, because we finished eighth. And eighth should never be acceptable at Arsenal Football Club. Then we finished fifth when we should have got fourth and handed it to Tottenham. Should never be acceptable at Arsenal Football Club. Now we're in the title race. You're going to get your props. That's not a flip-flop. That's the reality, people. That's just the reality of football. Opinions change. So, Havertz, there you go. Your flowers are being gifted to you, my friend. I want to see a performance tomorrow against Bayern Munchen. Um, who came off the bench? I can barely remember a performance from any of the subs. Am I doing them dirty here by just marking them all together? Martinelli came on on the right. Eddie, I genuinely can't remember. He had a header over the bar. Tommy, up. Oh, I've gone mad. Oh my days, I was going to group them up together. Leandro Trossardino, a.k.a. Bossardino. My deepest apologies, my friend. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. If I said to you now, i give you a £1,000, one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper, any player in the Arsenal team to score it, which player are you picking one-on-one -on -one with the keeper out of this Arsenal squad to finish that chance? I'm putting that £1,000 on Leandro Trossard. Jesus, don't know what's going to happen with him. Martinelli's a pretty good finisher, but I'm not sure. Saka's all good finisher, but I'm still not... To and Havertz, he has got the one-on-one -on -one miss in him a little bit. I think Martinelli's quite good one-on-one because -on -one he don't have as much time to think. So I'll go Martinelli or Trossard, but I think I'd put it on Trossard. Both, I mean, that chip, that chip, mate, oh, 
Alexis away at West Ham, the fake shot to put the goalkeeper down and then just chip it over him. Oh, my days. Martinelli and Trossard for me. Martinelli and Trossard. I think when Martinelli has to play off instinct, um, I think he's a really good finisher. Trossard, mate, at 8 out of 10. 8.5. You come off the bench against your old club, you chip the goalkeeper and then celebrate like Jude Bellingham. Shameless. That that was, oh, what a goal. The rest of the subs, 6 out of 10. I don't remember any of them really doing anything, to be honest. Um, no disrespect, but yeah. Mikel Arteta, I'm going to give Arteta 9 out of 10. You didn't want him at the club. You wanted Mourinho. <laughs> you flip-flop. Oh, dear. Nine out of ten, Mikel. Nine out of ten. What a performance. What a performance. Um, he tweeted, are you not entertained? He didn't give a damn about the fact he'd played for Brighton before, did he? I'm giving him nine out of ten for the celebration as well. Let's, let's have it right. That's just shameless. I love it. Uh, Mikel gets nine out of ten. I'm going to give him 9.5. You go to Brighton, beat him 3-0. What a performance. 9.5 out of 10 for Mikel Arteta. Great performance. And uh, long may it continue. You wanted Allegri. You know what? I, I don't think I ever really did want Allegri. I, I think Mourinho was the one I was leaning towards after uh, Emery before he went to before uh, Mourinho went to Tottenham. So, no, I don't think I was ever hyped about Allegri. Um, but they always throw the Mourinho. You wanted Jose. Uh, <laughs> right. Anyway, let's move on. Great performance. Great victory. People saying I haven't read out the Super Chats. Let's get into them. Chris Clark. Big up, bro. He said, Big C. Last season, we lost to the lesser teams. United will be tough to beat at home. Spurs will be playing like it's a cup final. Difficult games. No doubt about it. Big up, drink water, I mind your business, said, bless up, Big C, listening in the kitchen, my missus is mimicking you, shall I kick her out, she, hey, listen, have some respect, <laughs> no, really, big up yourself, big up to you, bro, a big up the family, uh, Daniel said, can we get a green screen of the WWF powers of pain with Mr. Fuji, except with Gabriel Saliba and Arteta's face, listen, if anyone wants to Photoshop, why not, he said, our centre backs are unreal, big up, Daniel, James Bond said, give Trossard a point for the Bellingham celebration. I was thinking he's not celebrating, but then I'm thinking he is celebrating. He didn't give a damn. He don't care about Brighton. He fell out with Deserby, didn't he? So maybe he's got no respect for him. Big up James Bond. SM said, Havertz is the ultimate grey man. Ah, oh, killer Kai Havertz, man. White Glove, we just need an attacker who bags striker left wing right wing. Big up to you. Dennis said, Killer Kai cherry picking like a prime Inzaghi. I'm all for it. Inzaghi was probably one of the best strikers on the planet from six yards out. He'd score a tap in from six yards, then run off like he'd scored a 30 yard volley. He made his career out of it. And uh, Brian said, Imagine starting awesome men and bringing in Havertz for the last 25. It's a long day for the centre backs. Let's hope we get a top quality striker in the summer, man. Dre said, Trossard is rude. We need more players. Like I told you, I want players that have that horrible edge to them. Trossard could have been a nice guy. Oh, I played for Brighton for a number of years. They signed me. I respect them so much. Oh, I won't celebrate. Man said, yo, brother, you lot wanted to sell me. Yeah, cool. What are you saying now, Deserby? I just chip your goalkeeper. You pushed him out the club, said he had an attitude problem. Celebrate, brother. Celebrate. Enjoy yourself. Um, so, yeah. And by the way, yeah, Mikel Arteta's live. So the re part of the reason as well I wanted to move the show was because they said the press conference was at 3.30. It looks like he's doing it at 4.30. Yeah, Mikel Arteta is live. There you go. Thanks a lot, mate. Do you know what, though? It's not bad because I'll squeeze in press conference reaction towards the end of the show. So why not? We'll get waffle settings in. Late afternoon uh, waffle. Right. Game done, top of the Premier League, Havertz man of the match, Arteta 9 out of 10. Live waffle, people. we got live waffle right now. Um, but let's look ahead. Let's look ahead. I was at the Emirates today, and people are buzzing. People are absolutely buzzing. That game tomorrow is going to be epic. It's going to be epic games. And I'm not talking about the people who made Fortnite. It's going to be epic games. I think tomorrow night will be up there with 
Manchester United Champions League semi-final. That wasn't a good night. We lost, but it was a big game. And maybe Barcelona when we came back. We haven't had many big Champions League nights at the Emirates. We have at Highbury. Tomorrow night's going to be epic. It's going to be epic. 60,000 Arsenal fans. Heard today that UEFA got about 3,000 3, tickets for the game for UEFA. And apparently a lot of the people they've given the tickets to are Bayern Munich fans, which is interesting because they've got no fans there. So they reckon there could be some Bayern Munich fans there. Um, how crazy is this picture, by the way, that I came across? Mikel Arteta was an Arsenal player at Arsenal with Serge Gnabry. How crazy is that? Serge Gnabry's done an interview today about Arsenal as well. Arteta and Gnabry in the same team. It's a pity Gnabry doesn't play for Arsenal now, is it? This game is absolutely huge. The watch-along tomorrow, I might have to put a letter through the letterbox for the neighbour and say, listen, he knows that I do watch-alongs and I say, listen, it's going to be crazy tomorrow. i got to make sure the laptop is on my insurance. i got to make sure the mobile phone's on my insurance. Is the TV insured? Is everything okay with the internet signal? I need to tell the next door neighbour, listen, between 8 and 10 o'clock tomorrow night, maybe stay out of the house or, you know, tomorrow night is going to be crazy. I, I, I don't know. Tomorrow's going to be insane. It's going to be absolutely insane, that game. Now, look out for the AFTV preview coming out tonight. I'm involved in that. Couple things I want to make abundantly clear here. Couple things I want to make clear. Number one, we can beat Bayern Munich tomorrow night. Number two, we have to beat Bayern Munich tomorrow night. Because I'm not sure we go to the Allianz Arena and beat them if we draw tomorrow. Not impossible, but not the way I want to do it. We need to beat them tomorrow night at the Emirates. Number three, don't underestimate Bayern Munich. I love the confidence. I love the fact that a lot of people think we're going to beat them. And I respect that as well. But do not underestimate this team. Because I've seen a lot of people going, oh, in the league, they're rubbish. They're second. They're 16 points behind Leverkusen. Brother. That team you've watched in the last few weeks in the Bundesliga, I don't think you will see that team on the pitch tomorrow. They've got nothing left to play for apart from this. They've been here. They've won this trophy before. Neuer's, Muller's, these brothers have won numerous competitions. They cannot underestimate that Bayern Munich team. We struggled against Porto. We went to penalties with Porto. We were third in the Portuguese league. Do not think that we are just going to roll Bayern Munich over. They've been here. They've done it. Musiala, you know, top player. Gnabry, Sané, Kane. You know they've got big players. But at the same time, you better go for them tomorrow. Mikel, I don't want you to think two-legged tie. Oh, just stay in it and then go to Germany. I don't think it's going to work like that. I've got to be honest. I think for Arsenal to go through to the semi-final, Bayern Munich have to get beaten tomorrow at the Emirates Stadium. They have to lose tomorrow night. If Bayern get out of there tomorrow with a win or a draw, we're in big trouble. We're in big trouble if we don't win that game tomorrow night. Arsenal have to beat Bayern Munich at the Emirates tomorrow night to get through to the semi-final, in my opinion. I think they have to. We've got to go for them. And, and if you get the first goal, don't sit and think, oh, we got a goal, I'll take that. Try and get the second. Try and get the third. Turn this into a Premier League game. Turn this into a Premier League game and take it to a tempo that they can't live with. Troy said, because of you, Curtis, I'm starting to believe. we got to believe, people. we got to believe. Big up Matt Southern He said, first leg is a must win and a win big. We need to put them away before the second leg. This is a game where some players can stamp their world-class credential. I totally agree with that last bit. Bakayo, bro. Martin Odegaard, Declan Rice, Salib. This is the biggest stage. The world's watching. Alfonso Davis against Saka. That's a blockbuster competition. 
Declan Rice against Musiala. Whew. Saliba against Harry Kane. This is this is proper. This is serious. There's ballers on that pitch, both teams. You can change the narrative starting tomorrow night. But I agree. You've got to put them away tomorrow night. Let me just say something about Bayern Munich. We're going to look at Bayern Munich. Bayern Munich have got a lot of problems within their camp at the moment, right? Kimmich talking about leaving. Musiala's rejected a new contract. Alfonso Davis rejected a new contract, wants to go to Bayern Munich. Thomas Tuchel sacked at the end of the season, knows he's leaving, knows this is the only competition he can win. No fans supporting them in the stadium. If Arsenal go 1-2-0 up, I think that Bayern team will start to cave in because I don't think they're a unit. I don't think they're together. That's why they haven't had a good season, knocked out the German Cup, 16 points behind Leverkusen. It's not easy to just turn it on and off. Oh, I'm going to play well on Tuesday and then I'm going to play rubbish on Saturday. It's not easy to do that. If they're playing well and they score in their confidence, they become a big problem. I think if we can score a couple goals, they might cave in a little bit because they're not a unit, in my opinion. They've got a lot of problems there at the moment. However, some problems they're not going to have tomorrow is the team news. I had a feeling Thomas Tuchel was playing mind games. Fabrizio tweeted a few hours ago, Manuel Neuer, Kingsley Coman, Leroy Sané, Masri and also Pavlovic are all back in Bayern Munich training this morning. Sasha Bowie and Bunasar will miss the game. So Neuer, Komen and Sané in particular, those three, big players, big hitters for them. Didn't play at the weekend. There was a lot of optimism, you know, big players that are not playing, but they are back. Whether they're fit enough to start or not, I'm not sure. But obviously, great options for them. Uh, apparently, I saw a thing today. They reckon Leroy Sané will start on the right. And he is a player that I rate very highly. And uh, whoever's playing at left-back for Arsenal, you are going to have to perform against him. Um, so, yeah, but listen. Let's not be afraid of them. I respect them, but we can't be scared of them. And at the end of the day, like you said, unknown, see, if we beat them, they can't go, oh, we were missing four players. No, you had a good team out, you got cooked. That's what we need to do. We need to beat them regardless of who is on the pitch. Couple other things to look at. Couple other things to look at. The Bayern Munich team from the weekend. Now, as I said, you can't read too much into it, but obviously we need to grab any positive that we can grab. This was the Bayern Munich team on the weekend that lost. They were 2-0 up, they lost 3-2. Ulrich was in goal. I would imagine he'll be replaced by Neuer. Kimmich was at right back. Alfonso Davis at left back. Kim Min Jae and Upper Meccano at centre back. Conrad Lehmer and Goretzka um, were in the middle. Muller was on the right. Musiala was in the middle, in the 10. Gnabry on the left. And Harry Kane up front. I mean, listen, they're all experienced top international players. But you, uh, when I saw the highlights, it looked more like Muller was in the cam roll, by the way, and Musiala was on the right. However, they can be got at. Yeah, there's a rumour out, which I don't get, but it could be true. There's a rumour that De Ligt and Dyer could be the starting two tomorrow. Why would he play Eric Dyer against us? But if he does, thank you very much. Upper Meccano is a loose cannon. Maybe he doesn't trust him. I think whoever's at centre-back for them can be absolutely got at. I'm sorry, listen, Martinelli, if he starts, Kimmich can get dealt with. I don't think Kimmich is great at right back. I think he's become a much better midfielder. Upper Meccano is a loose cannon. He's had red cards, own goals, penalties. Kim Min Jae's decent. Alfonso Davis is a he's a runner. He's a track star. He's rapid. He'll run the hundred meters in nine point seven. He's not a great defender. Don't get caught up in Alfonso Davis speed thinking he's a great defender. He's got great recovery. I saw Jaden Sancho cooking him the other day. Yeah, twisting and turning him, sat him down on the floor. Saka needs to show what he's about. Listen, their strength is their attack. Even if, if, if it was this same front four. Gnabry, hugely motivated. What Alfonso Davis will do is get forward on the overlap. 
Ben White could have a long night at the office because Gnabry with Davis on the overlap. You are going to need help from Saka on that side. Musiala will drift into the pockets. Harry Kane, we know him as well as anybody. Um, and he's got a great record against us. We've got to damage their defence. I think that's their weakness. Even if Neuer's in goal, that you know, it's an old Neuer that's been injured. Kimmich needs to be got at. Maybe you can pick off Davis when he goes forward and hit him in transition. And the centre-backs for me are not great. And if they dare to play Dyer and Delict, I think they'll have big problems. But yeah, I think there'll be goals. I think there'll be goals. It wouldn't surprise me if uh, both teams scored. I would love for us to keep a clean sheet which we've been keeping a lot of clean sheets um, in the last few games. So this will be difficult. This will be really difficult because the Champions League, you know, it's almost totally different from your form in the Premier League. We've seen Chelsea pour in the Prem, win the Champions League, you know. So we, we sort of have to find a way um, to turn it into a Premier League game because I think they struggle to deal with intensity. Um, by Munich. I felt that's how they were beaten by Dortmund. The intensity was too much for them. So it's going to be an unbelievable game of football. Uh, Ross said, I can't cope with all these games. Need therapy. It's 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 uh, back to back, mate. You know, as soon as you have a little break, three days and we're back. Emmanuel said, Curtis, I rescheduled all my Tuesday appointments and meetings to Wednesday. I am out of office tomorrow. I'm already nervous. I respect it. I really respect it. Trossard said, are you not entertained? The celebration, the tweet afterwards, ice cold people, ice cold Trossard. Man didn't give a damn about um, about Brighton. He said, listen, I don't care that I used to play for them. Um, yeah, there's some quotes coming out of his press conference now. I probably won't do a full press conference reaction because I doubt it will be on the website straight away. Has he spoken to Xabi Alonso? The two of them are close friends. He said, great question. I'm not going to answer that. Oh, that's great. Uh, on Harry Kane, he said, it's not only him. We know about the individual qualities of their players. He said, the previous record of Arsenal against Bayern Munich shouldn't be a factor. Um, yeah, he hasn't said anything groundbreaking that you're going to be desperate to... Um, to... Uh, to go and get him, and yeah, apparently every single Arsenal player has trained today. Uh, Urian Timber did the first 15 minutes by himself, but completed the rest of the session with the group. Will Timber be on the bench? But then he hasn't played for the under-23s yet, so probably not. Um, right, let's get down to it. What team is going to beat this Bayern Munich team? Jesus said, I don't remember the last day I played football without pain. Sell him, sell him, sell him. I don't want to hear people talking like that. I'm sorry. It feels like his knee is a ticking time bomb. Get him out. Get him out. We've been here before. Good players, injuries. You run them into the ground, you get no money for them. So my advice to Arsenal, get him on the bench next season. Get him out at the end of next year. I don't think he'll go this summer. But, yeah, I don't want to hear quotes like that from the striker. Um, I've seen a lot of people talking about revenge. We owe Bayern Munich revenge for the 5-1. I don't even think this falls under revenge. It kind of does, but I think it's... This is a new team. You didn't do that to Saka. You didn't do that to Odegaard. You didn't do that to Declan Rice. They, don't, they need to create their own history. And beat this Bayern Munich team. Um, so I suppose the revenge comes from the fans. And what we suffered with them five ones, you know. But let's pick the team. David Rea in goal. Brick Wall at centre back. Gabriel. William Saliba. Big night for them against Harry Kane. The reason it will be interesting... These two centre-backs are used to going up against strikers. Harry Kane will drop deep and get into the pocket. Sometimes that can make it difficult for the centre-back because sometimes they might not even have somebody to mock because they drop so deep. Um, ben White will be at right-back. 
I'm going to pick the team that I would pick, and then I'm going to say what I think Arteta will pick. And I want you guys to tell me whether you agree. Those four is definite. Most eight, Probably eight of this team is certain. Raya in goal, White at right back, Gabriel Saliba, Odegaard and Rice in midfield, Saka and Havertz up top. You've got left back, left wing, centre midfield. There's no time for sentiment. I don't care if you played well for a few games. I don't care if he's done. No, not interested. Thank you, but this is a this is this is too big a game. Three options: Kivior, Zinchenko, Tomiyasu. For me, there's only one correct answer. It's Tomiyasu. Zinchenko defensively against Leroy Sané. I'm sorry, I haven't waited all these years to watch Arsenal in the Champions League to see that. So I can already tell you what's going to happen. It's like watching the Titanic. If you've never watched the Titanic, the boat hits the iceberg. Zinchenko will be the boat probably hitting the iceberg. I don't know which one's the iceberg, which one's the boat. No Diddy, by the way. Um, and Kivior, Porto away, struggled against a lively winger. It's got to be Tommy Asu. Has to be Tommy Asu. Kivior is more match fit. Kivior Tommy is going to get hurt. Uh, I want to know your opinions. Kivior hasn't played the last few games either. Been dropped, hasn't even come on. I feel like Tommy Asu has been coming on to prepare him to start this game. He's our best left back that's available at the moment, in my opinion, especially defensively. Curtis 3 0 at half time, put £10 on, says Don. For me, Tommy Asu. Zinchenko is the captain of the... Oh, dear. Uh, no Zinni. No disrespect to Kiwi. I rate him, but I just think this is a level too much for Kivio. Playing out of position. He's not a left-back. I think we have to understand that. He's a centre-back trying to do a job at left-back. You don't want to be doing a job at left-back against Leroy Sané. It's just not that day for it. I'm playing Tommy Asu every single day of the week. Let's go into midfield again. I'm ruthless, people, like an old-school convertible. Jorginho, thank you. You've done well. You're going to get game time between now and the end of the season. Thomas Partey. They called him the octopus at Atletico Madrid. Champions League experience. Big night experience. Power. Quality on the ball. My worry for Arsenal is if Musiala's in the pocket... I think he can run rings around Jorginho because of his mobility or Jorginho's lack of mobility. The question will be, is Thomas Partey fit enough to play against Bayern Munich? He's been out for nearly six months. He's come on for 20 minutes a couple of times and he played 70 minutes against Luton when he started. He didn't come on against Brighton. If Partey's fit, I'm playing him over Jorginho every single day of the week. No sentiment here for me. Do I think Part A will start tomorrow? Probably not. I think he'll play Jorginho with Rice. But I'm playing Part A every single day of the week. Man said he isn't an octopus anymore. He's a shrimp. He can barely run. Oh, dear. Listen, to me, he's fit. He played 70 against Luton. He's fit enough. I'm starting him. I'm starting him. That's our best midfield, in my opinion. Martin Odegaard, skipper. Huge night for him. Huge night for this guy. People think on this channel I'm harsh on Odegaard. I actually think he's one of the best players at Arsenal. I think he's the most creative. I think he's one of the most important. My thing with Odegaard is turn up in the big games. You'll be up against Goretzka. You'll be up against probably Lehmer. Lehmer might go right back. Kimmich might be. Kimmich and Goretzka double pivot. You've got to find a way to get beyond them and create chances for us. He's one of our best players. So I've got high expectation of him. Front three. Two of them picked themselves. Bakayo, huge night for him. Champions League quarterfinal. Is he world class? Isn't he world class? These are the nights. These are the nights, my friend. Alfonso Davis, Champions League quarterfinal, Bayern Munich. You're considered the star boy. You're the one who gets the praise all the time. Show us on the biggest stage. Some people are saying they wouldn't start Saka, but. Ugh. We haven't really got a right wing. You've got to back him. You've got to back Saka to do something. I, I would accept Saka not playing well tomorrow if he scores. That's where I'm at with Saka. You put a 6 out of 10 performance in, but score, I'll take it. He might not give us an 8, 9 out of 10 performance. Kai Havertz starts up front. No-brainer. Clutch FC. 
Clutch FC, quiet game. Again, same with Havertz. Give me a 6 out of 10 tomorrow and score. I'll accept it all day long. No problem. No problem. This is where it gets interesting again. Some people are saying play Jesus on the right ahead of Saka. Gabriel Martinelli. Pace, pace, and more pace. Need pace. Lamar or Kimmich at right back. I want Martinelli on the left wing. He's our fastest player, in my opinion. He's our fastest player. I need him on that left wing. Let me just say something. I'm not sure whether Martinelli starts or not tomorrow because the problem you got, Jesus has had a couple decent games on the left. I think Arteta will feel like I hope Arteta doesn't feel like he has to play Jesus and Zinchenko because it, they will be looking at him saying, Mikel, you took me from Manchester City as a squad player to bring me here to play in games like this. So is he is he ruthless enough to drop them for games like this? I don't want to see Zinchenko on that pitch tomorrow night. And I'll be honest, you know, Jesus has done well in the Champions League for us up front, but that would be my team. Part A, Rice, Odegaard, Martinelli, Havertz, Saka. Do I think he's going to pick that team? I don't think he will. I think he'll play Jorginho. I think Jorginho will play ahead of Part A. I think, he, oh, will he play Martinelli or will he play? I feel like he might play Jesus. I feel like he might play Jesus on the left. Did well against Brighton, worked hard, won a penalty. He's done well for us in the Champions League this season, playing up front. I think he'll find a way to squeeze Jesus into that team, and I think it's left wing. We still don't know whether Martinelli is fully fit yet. How big was that injury? He hasn't started a game since Sheffield United. I think Martinelli would seriously damage their back four, but... I hope he plays. Someone Gunnar said, with that Bayern defence, that lineup on the screen suits as well. Because the thing is, Partey and Rice gives you that power. Goretzka and them guys, they can't overpower us with them. And Partey can play those passes through the lines into Odegaard. And Martinelli is just the pace. He's the pace. Martinelli and Tomiyasu, that's a strong left wing. I don't want to see Zinchenko and Jesus. Nah, man, I don't want to see that. I don't want to see it. I think that team beats Bayern Munich tomorrow, but I'm just... I think he'll play Jorginho, definitely. I think Jorginho will play um, ahead of Partey. I think he might play Gabriel Jesus on the left. He played him against Man City and he played him against Brighton. And then he played Trossard against Luton. So, Martinelli hasn't started a game since Sheffield United. If you get injured and you haven't started, are you just throwing him back in against Bayern Munich? I think he might use him as a weapon off the bench, which I actually don't agree with. I would start him, but yeah. Um, yeah, we'll have to see about that one. What do you guys think, people? School prediction, I'm caught up between 2-1 or 3-1. Because of how we've played in the Champions League, we might be a bit cautious. So we, I might go for 2-1. Which I don't know. Would I be happy with 2-1? Yeah, I, pro I, would, I would still take it. As long as we go Germany with a lead, ideally I want a two-goal lead. It's going to be a hard game. It's going to be a tough game. Has he been thinking, getting match fit with subbing him though, I think he'll be fine to start. Yeah, I listen, I want Martinelli to start tomorrow. Make no mistake about that. Um... 4-0, we're going to batter him. Graham says 1-0. Uh, Real Gunner said, Big C, we've got a standard of comparing players like Foden and uh, Palmer to Saka shows how classy he is. Yeah, 3-1 isn't a huge cushion. Listen, a 2-0 goal, a two-goal lead would be a fantastic result for Arsenal. Uh, can Arteta stop putting Martinelli on the right? It's interesting he keeps doing that. Sello said, I'd be happy with 2-0. If we keep a clean sheet against Bayern Munich, it's unbelievable. Uh, Ruben said, a Trossard must start. Leandro Trossard he comes off the bench and scores a goal like that. He probably does, but where do you start him? You're playing him on the left head of Martinelli. 
You're playing him up front ahead of Havertz. White Glove said part A, two errors versus Luton. Surely Mikel noticed. Yeah, we weren't punished by them, though. Callum said, remember when we was all calling Havertz? Neil from in between has been great watching you, Curtis Big up. Road to 100k. I mean, he was playing like Neil from the in between us as well. But he's balling out now. Uh, Killer Kai. And Gunnar Rola said, Jesus has a very good record in the Champions League. Our players are not fully fit and still making an impact. See Jesus' comments via Fabrizio. Back the boys. And listen, of course, we're going to support the team. I was just looking. Gabriel Jesus in the Champions League this season for Arsenal. Has played six games, four goals and two assists. He's done the business in the Champions League. He's got four goals in six Champions League games. He's got four goals in 21 Premier League games. I think Jesus will start left wing tomorrow night because of that record, because of the fact he's been back from injury for a little while. And I think Martinelli will possibly be used off the bench. But I hope Martinelli does start. Listen, people, thank you very much for tuning in. Really appreciate it. Wax, i got to get back to you, bro. My apologies. Oh, listen, i got to do a show on your channel. Hit me up. We'll sort it out. But make sure you go and follow Wax online as well. Great content creator. Um, listen, tomorrow night, we'll see what we're about. I said it in the AFTV preview. Make sure you go and watch that tonight. I said... This team still have to overcome hurdles. And Cecil was like, oh, you're not fully convinced by the team yet. I said, listen, we're a fantastic team, but we still haven't won a major trophy. Great teams win big trophies. To me, you're not, con you're not considered a great team unless you win a major trophy. No one cares about exciting teams that didn't win anything or nicked an FA Cup here and there. You've got to win the big trophies, bro. Brendan Rodgers, Liverpool. I remember us going to Anfield and we lost 5-1. I said, this team is absolutely outrageous. Sturridge, Sterling, Suarez, Gerrard, Coutinho. It was a cheat code. They they battered us. I remember being 4-0 down at half-time thinking we could lose this game 10-0. They didn't win anything. Their manager left. Nobody remembers that team anymore. But they remember Klopp's team with Mane, Firmino and Salah winning the Champions League winning the Premier League. This football club, this team, needs a major trophy to be considered a great team. Otherwise, you're an exciting team that didn't really achieve anything. Those fine margins, you change them by winning games like tomorrow night. One of the biggest games in Arsenal history in the Champions League at the Emirates, and I'm not saying that lightly. The AFTV preview is out now. Came out eight minutes ago. Go and check that out. Um... I will, be I will be dropping my own preview tomorrow morning, pre-recorded. Uh, big up Ash for letting us know the preview on AFTV is out. Now go and check that out. Me, Cecil, Turkish and James. Pre-recorded preview will drop tomorrow. I did that at the Emirates today. We'll go into a bit more detail. Tomorrow night, 8 p.m. kickoff. I will be live an hour before kickoff. It is a big one. Get involved. Make sure you're in the comments tomorrow. It's going to be crazy. Big up to everyone tuned in today. Let me read out these final super chats. Uh, per Inga said, go Arsenal tomorrow. Love for the love. Big up, bro. Thank you for tuning in today. Two and a half K locked in uh, later than usual. Uh, I will be doing a show with Turkish on Wednesday. Uh, it'll be Wednesday evening. So make sure you lock in for that. Uh, OG's podcast will be doing it. I think he said uh, he can't do it till about nine or ten o'clock at night. So that'll be a late night podcast over on his channel big up to everyone locked in hit the like subscribe if you haven't already tomorrow phew, big game by munich against arsenal we need to beat them big up take care see you tomorrow bless <laughs>